Okay guys, my name is Sayed and today we're going to start the chapter 3 and it's about the memory and processor. So let's begin the class. Memory is used to store instruction, the process of executing those instructions. Both of these parts of a computer system have a big impact on the performance of a system. Uh, the more memory and the faster the processor, the faster the computer can do its work. Now let's discuss the memory. So what is memory? Memory can be accessed faster than the secondary storage. A memory is used to store instructions so that the processor can fetch the instruction quickly in order to process them. Here are three types of memory that you need to know. Number one, we have the random access memory or RAM. Then we have the read-only memory or ROM. And then we have the flash memory. First, let's discuss the random access memory or RAM. Software is loaded into RAM from computer's secondary storage. The processor then fetch software instruction from the memory and execute them. RAM is volatile, which means that it can lose its data when the power is turned off. This means that any software that is open in RAM will be closed when you turn off the computer. And now let's discuss the impact of the size of RAM on the users. RAM is used to store programs that are in use. The more RAM that is available, the more program can run at the same time. The more RAM you have, the better your computer will perform. When the computer does not have enough RAM, it uses the part of hard drive to store program. This is called the virtual memory. Virtual memory is slower than the RAM, so the computer will run slower when it is using the virtual memory. If you have a solid state drive or SSD, virtual memory will be faster than if you have a traditional hard drive. Because a traditional hard drive has the moving parts, so read and write, head and disk. RAM is a temporary storage space for the programs and files. When you open a program, it is loaded into the RAM. When you close the program, it is removed from the RAM. If there is not enough RAM to store all the programs and files you are using, the computer will use virtual memory. Virtual memory is a part of the hard drive that is used as if it were RAM. Using virtual memory can slow down the computer because the hard drive is much slower than the RAM. If you have a solid state drive or SSD, virtual memory will be faster than if you have a traditional hard drive. You can add more RAM to your computer to improve the performance. The more RAM you have, more programs and files you can run at the same time. Adding more RAM can also be helpful when programs are updated. So as updates often include more complex features that require the use of more memory. Now let's discuss the read-only memory or ROM. So what is ROM? ROM stores data permanently. Unlike the RAM, ROM is non-volatile, me meaning that data is not lost when the power is turned off. So RAM is volatile memory, which means when there is no power, the data will be lost from the RAM. But the ROM is non-volatile, which means even if there is no power, the data stored in the ROM will still remain. ROM is used in single-purpose computers such as calculators, digital watches, and washing machines. A general-purpose computer such as home PCs and laptops also use ROM to boot the system and load the operating system from the secondary storage. Now let's discuss the types of ROM. Uh, ROMs generally refer to the memory that cannot be chained after manufacture. Its full name is MOS Program Read-Only Memory. PROM stands for Programmable Read-Only Memory. It is manufactured with the ability to be written to, but it can only be written to once. Computer system cannot swap instruction in and out of ROM. It is possible to chain the content of some types of ROM so that the data on it can be updated. So now let's discuss the types of ROM. So there are two types of ROM. One is called the EP-ROM. Uh, which is erasable programmable read-only memory and second one is WP-ROM which is electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. Now let's compare the EP-ROM and WP-ROM. The content of EP-ROM and WP-ROM can be erased and then written. Data stored in EP-ROM can be erased by posing it to the strong volatile or UV light. Data stored on WP-ROM is erased by applying a voltage to one of the pins on the ROM chip. This means that you don't have to remove the ROM chip to erase the content of WP-ROM. The process of erasing and rewriting the content of EP-ROM and WP-ROM is used when updating the firmware of a device. So here are the difference between RAM and ROM. Here we have the RAM and then ROM, all types ROM, and these are the criteria. So number one is the store data when the power is off. So RAM is a volatile memory, so it cannot store the data when the power is off. And ROM is non-volatile, so which means it can store the data even if there is no electricity. Can swap instruction in and out. Yes, you can swap instruction in and out in RAM and also in the ROM. Accessible in any order. Yes, you can access the data from RAM and ROM in any order you want. Intended to store. Yes, RAM can be used to store data, but temporarily, but the ROM can be used to store data permanently. It can be upgraded. Yes, you can upgrade the RAM and you cannot upgrade the ROM. Okay, so now let's discuss the flash memory. So what is flash memory? Uh, flash memory is a type of WP ROM. Like other types of ROM, it is non-volatile. Non-volatile means that it can still store the data even if there is no electricity. It does not have any moving parts. It has a fast access time and low power consumption. Flash memory is used in SSDs that are used in portable devices such as laptop computers as these devices often rely on internal batteries uh, for their power. Flash memory is often used as removable storage in USB drives and SD cards. Now let's discuss the processors. A processor is the brain of a computer. It is made up of one or more central processing unit or CPUs. A CPU is made up of one or more cores. Each core can execute instruction independently which allow the processor to do more work at the same time. For example, a quad core processor has four cores. This means that it can execute up to four instructions at the same time, which can significantly improve the performance of the computer. Now let's see what is the clock cycle. Processor speed is measured in clock cycles per second. 
This is the number of time per second the processor can carry out one or more instructions. Uh, clock cycle are mayor in unit called hertz, kilohertz, megahertz, and gigahertz. Clock speed is not the only factor that determines the processor speed. The amount of work that a CPU can do in each cycle is also important. Different processors can carry out more instruction per core in each cycle. This means that they can do more work in the same amount of time. So it is a table about the measuring clock cycle. You can pause the video and you can view it. So that's it for the chapter 3. In the next class, we start the unit number 2. Okay, so see you in the next class.